Welcome to the Atmosphere Church channel. On behalf of all of us here at Atmosphere, thank you for watching. We pray that this message will touch your heart and change your life. Regardless of what you believe, where you come from, or what questions you might have, you are welcome here. Our desire is to help lead you in experiencing God by following Jesus. If you want to find out more information about us, head over to our website at atmosphere.church. And don't forget to click below to subscribe. Enjoy the message. Kids Camp Thousand Oaks is an answer to a decade of prayers. Uh, before I came, I thought this camp was going to be much smaller and be less fun. I thought it was going to be like scary, but as soon as I came here, my scared face turned into a happy face. Many of these kids have had to deal with really tough adult things. This camp is made for them to learn what love feels like in real time. Royal Family Kids Camp is a really loving environment. They're very kind because I love how everyone supports me when I do stuff, which is crazy. I just love them, man. It's like becoming best friends by just it, living in a house together, kind of. My camper that I had, despite all that's happened to him, despite all the way he's been treated, this young man blew me away. He jumped right into the week, uh, wanting to experience everything to the fullest. It was like fun because we got to do a lot of activities. My favorite part of camp was the tea party. We got to go swimming. Catching all these new species of animals. All the people that is in my cabin also thought there was lots and lots of food. My favorite part of camp was the playground. If I want to be honest, probably the birthday party. Everyone was so kind to one of my favorites is we're kind of making new friends. It was also learning about the Bible. I learned that he's always there for you and he loves you and he supports you. That no matter how hard you're going through through your life, he'll always be there for you. What I learned from the campers was you have to embrace where you're at and soak up every moment, and that is what those campers did. There was so much love at this camp. You just felt it. You felt it the day you, you walked on the campus. I was so changed by the experience. I just had a lot of fun. I bonded with people. I don't know how, but it's like more than I can even imagine. It's like just perfect. I want to stay here for like two more weeks. I will never forget all these people here. I'm really going to miss them.
Well, welcome everybody. My name is Pastor Jim Cruz. I'm the lead pastor here at Atmosphere. We are so grateful that you guys chose to worship and be together with us. We're one big, happy, blended family. As you can tell, look around, say, I'm so glad you showed up to somebody and give them a knuckle bump. Somebody next to you, in front of you, behind you. Because you know showing up is half the battle, right, Bishop? Showing up's half the battle. And can we give it up for all of our royal family kids, volunteers, Katie. Katie Scholl, our, our camp director, did an amazing job, but uh, Jared put that video together. We appreciate all of you guys, and for those of you that may be new to our church, we have been in this series for the last several weeks talking about the least of these, and we, we're focusing on this chapter in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, where Jesus is talking about the at the very end of the age, there's going to be a judgment, and God is going to separate some to the right, some to the left, and the ones on the right are those, those people that are really his kids, and his kids have a distinguishing feature, and their distinguishing feature is they love the least of these. And so we've been taking some weeks, and we've been looking at how we're doing with this idea. And so today, I can't think of a, a, a better way uh, to bring this whole series to a close, uh, to bring Bishop W.C. Martin all the way from the great state of Texas to be with us. Now, I've got to read his bio just so that most of you in this room will know who this man of God is before he gets up here and he starts talking to us. Now, normally his church service in Texas is three hours long. So... So Bishop, we, we can't do that today, all right? Um, but we love you. We, we do know you have a great word for us. But Bishop Martin is the pastor of Bennett Chapel Missionary Baptist Church in Center, Texas. He and his church entered a love crusade for unwanted children and adopted 77 children out of the foster care system in his city. Amazing. They pretty much emptied it. He and his wife, Lady Donna Martin, have a legacy of love and share their story in their book, Small Town, Big Miracle, which is available in the parking area. Before you leave, make sure you pick up a copy of that. And Bishop Martin is extensively involved in helping to promote adoption at the local, state, and national level and travels throughout the United States sharing his message. So would you give a warm atmosphere welcome to Bishop Martin. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that give me strength from death to damn it will never lose his power oh it reaches to the Lord his valley oh it rolls to the heart his mountain oh, From day to day, it will never, 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 never lose his power. I am so humble to be here today, thanks to Pastor Jim and to cater who all made it possible in this church for me to come. Uh, I'm from a small place that you probably never heard of. It's not even on the map. 
Um, my church is located in Possum Tribe. And don't y'all look at me funny. Uh, and I guess you wonder what I'm doing way over here out of Possum Tribe. But I want to tell you, don't clock out until you come to Possum Tribe. We thank God today. I want to read you a passage of scriptures. I really believe to my soul that we does not understand the value of adoption. Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, that very first chapter. Paul says, according as he had chosen us, chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Now get this, get this. Having predestinated us unto adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself according to his, his good pleasure and will. I challenge the church today in committing themselves to adoption. The children that come into this world is God's precious gifts to humanity. Are y'all going to pray with me? It is our responsibility as a church, as parents, at school, to develop the life of these children where they will have a productive life. If our job to nurture them, guide them, protect them, and be positive examples before them. But today in this world, there is a massive cry of children who are hungry, thirsty, lonely, and has been left alone, needing shelter, needing someone to help them. And we, in a little place, a little church sitting so far back off in the woods that, that don't have no McDonald's, don't have no street lights, with less than 200 members, we decided to make a difference. We decided that and didn't understand what adoption really meant. We didn't have a clue what it was all about. Out of the hurt of a woman who lost her mother. And see, in, in places like Possum Trot, we have small families out there. My wife had 17 brothers and sisters. I got nine brothers and one sister. So we just have small families. So when, 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 when her mother died, she said, Lord, if you don't take this burden off of me, just let me die. I don't want to live no more. God said, give back. You talk about all the love that your mother gave you. Give it back to someone that don't know what love is all about. And we made a decision, you all, to, to call in some, because we didn't understand what God was saying. So we made a decision to call in some universal help. Help me, Holy Ghost. You know when you got a problem, you can call in some universal help. So we decided to go down on our knees and have a little talk with the Lord. See, my mama told me a long time ago, she said, boy, have a little talk with Jesus. He'll make everything all right. So through the, the, the prayer that we prayed, God said, I want you to foster and adopt. Still, pastor, we didn't understand what God was saying. And you know... When you're starting something for the first time, you're going to always run into problems. Because if you're doing something that the enemy don't like, you're going to have some problem. Y'all can sit up there and be quiet on me if you want to, because you know I'm telling you the truth. Some of us this morning had a hard time just to get here. So you might as well come on and agree with me, say amen, ouch, or something, because you know I'm telling you the truth. When you start doing a work for God, the enemy going to show up. Yeah. And 
a lot of times we're not ready for them pop-ups. So that's why he just pops up out of nowhere and calls you some problem because he's trying to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. We got involved in adoption. And here's the amazing thing about it. I'm just giving you a little background of my story. We, we had to drive 120 miles round trip to take what you call pride classes in Texas. And we went for 16 weeks, one night a week. And we, when we finished the pride classes, we got a little boy and a little girl by the name of Tyler and Mercedes. And you tell me I was tough. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you cannot imagine a three-year-old and a five-year-old could be so tough. But that little girl was tough. But you know, I always felt like this. I'm too old a cat to be fooled by a kitten. Come on, somebody. Because, see, I let them know I done been there, done that, and got a T-shirt to prove it. So, ain't nothing you can do right now to fool this old gray-headed preacher. When we got involved in adoption, and we carried our, our two children to church, and a lot of the members said, you know, I always wanted to do that, but didn't know. So, I went to looking in the Bible. I said, where, where did this thing all started from? Was it something that man came up with? Or was it um, a God idea? And then when I first noticed here, in Ephesians, it was a God thing. Now, 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 now let, let me ask y'all a question. And, and, and you can do it by show of hands. How many of us, how many of us are believers in this house? If you're a believer, I, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to turn to him and say, I've been adopted. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> However you feel about it, that's fine and good. But the scripture says, it was God's good pleasure to adopt us through Jesus Christ. To bring us out of our confusion, out of our mess, out of our messed up minds and messed up attitude, and bring us into a royal family. So now we all can scream, I'm free. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, uh. Come on, somebody. I'm free. I know I'm free. The Lord has set me free. Ain't no more change holding me. I got power over every demonic force on this earth. So now, if you're free and Jesus done adopt us, why is it that we can't follow his legacy? Y'all say amen again now. You said amen a while ago. Don't stop here. Why can't we follow his legacy? Now, Jesus said, he said, Peter, this, 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 he said, Satan desired to sift you as wheat. And, 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 but I pray for thee that thy faith may be strengthened. When you're converted, go strengthen your brother. Now, look at all of the children here in the system. And look how many churches in this country. Something is wrong somewhere. Are we afraid? What are you afraid of? We walked in something blindfold, but yet. See, this is what I love about God. He don't give vision without provision. Although we didn't understand what God was doing, all we knew that God was doing something. And because of the fact, and let me tell you all one thing. If you sitting up waiting you build this big old fine house, forget it. If you waiting on you build a big old family life center, forget it. Just do the work and God will give the increase. Amen. Don't y'all know the scripture said one can plant, one can water, but only God what? Give the increase. What, what I'm saying to you all today is that his something is wrong with the church. It's not wrong with the system. It's wrong with the church. Because we are not taking these bold steps and do what we've done in Possum Trot on the other side of Coonville to make a difference in a life child. You, you know you got, when you get, before you get to Possum Trot, you got to go through Coonville. You can't get to Possum Trot no other way unless you go through Coonville. And y'all think I'm joking, but this is a fact. 
it's a fact. Look online. You'll find it. You'll find me on there too. Look online. You'll find it. <laughs> Jane, we adopted less than 23 families. We adopted 77 children. <laughs> My daughter, Mercedes and Tyler, was in nine homes in one year. You all don't have a clue of what these babies are going through with. And we're just going along, and God done called all of us to purpose. God just didn't save you for him, for you to be saved. God said, go into the vineyard and work on whatever right I pay. So he called us out of darkness into the marvelous light to make a difference in somebody's life. So what are we doing with it? The children need you. The children need you. And for those of you who have adopted and who's part, I applaud you today. I applaud you for coming out of your comfort zone and making a life of a different in a child's life. The majority of our children have already, some got their own families now. Some gone to college, got their degrees and all that. That is some good children in that system. They ended up in that system. I don't want to go there, but I'm going to have to. Getting them was fun. Yeah. Come on now, y'all. Get quiet on me now. <laughs> it was fun getting them. But now they are here. What you going to do? What are we going to do? Everybody in this room may not can be able to adopt, but everybody in here can do something to help in the process. The thing over here is how many of us today are willing to get involved? God got an indictment against the church because the church has not fulfilled James 1 27. Pure religion is undefiled. That God accepts we take care of the widows and the orphanage. That's the word, y'all. That didn't come out of Martin's archive. That came out of the word of God. Yes. This is the thing that we have to do now. It's to make a difference in the life of children. Jesus taken one day and held up a little child and said, suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. What Jesus is saying here is that it should be he lifted the child up to make a demonstration to us to let us know the closer that some of us going to get to heaven is through them children. We have overlooked the most precious gift of all, and that's raising a child. Not one of my children. A lot of times we get those kids in our home, I can't deal with them. I can't deal with them. You know, can't is not in the word of God. You can't find can't nowhere from Genesis to Revelation. You won't find can't. But what you will find is can made it so plain. He said, I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthened me. You see, the thing that we have to understand here, just Martin by himself, no, I can't do it. But with some power from my own heart, I can do anything. I got the power to pull down everything the enemy done stepped up. Y'all must be don't know about the Holy Ghost up here. You may call it Holy Spirit, but we call it Holy Ghost Impossible Trial. It does the same thing. It gives you power to walk on demons and devils. Power to stand up in the midst of chaos and claim victory right there. Yeah. Oh, it's time now that the church Stand up and do the work that God have called them to. When Jesus got ready to go back home, he, he said that, that, that he, he said, I want you to go into all the world. He called the church. It wasn't just disciples, but he called the church to go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. We got to move now. It ain't no time to lose. Everybody in here right now, I want to let you know that you're in the best place you've ever been in your life. I don't care what the politicians are doing because they don't control Jack. Amen. They're so up there fighting for power is unreal. But I'm not worried about that power. I'm concerned about the Holy Ghost power. 
because wherever I go, I got the power with me. And I can tell the devil, you can't touch this because I got the blood of Jesus that's covering my life. Oh, God, help us in this place here. Help me, Holy Ghost. Can't touch me. Y'all need to say that to you. You can't touch Satan. You can't touch me. The only problem I have is what God allowed me to go in. I see Job walking through the bar, talking through the door right now. When God asked Satan, said, what you doing, Santa? He said, I'm going to and fro. He said, but have you tried my servant Job? Sometime the Lord will allow the enemy to come against us to see what we made out of. We walk around here and talk about, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, and, I, and, and he this and he that. Well, prove it. Prove it. Because if you love him, you're going to have to show and tell. I told my wife, I said, girl, if you love me, why you don't cook me some biscuits? the wrong idea in his mind about adoption because the only way we was able to get back to, to God was through adoption and if Jesus hadn't come and died on the cross and suffered we would still been running, running, bind, running at each other not knowing who we are and because of the fact that he died on the cross and because of the fact that we came to him and accepting him, he taking the blindness off of us. Now he got, we, we are not, we're not aliens no more. We are part of a royal family, a royal family that can walk around with the glowingness on us, a family that can stand up and say, I know my redeemer live, a family that know God is able to carry you through any situation, a family that understand that there's power in the blood of Jesus, a family that understand now that the enemy don't have no power over me, but I got power over him. And this is what adoption is all about. We have been adopted into a family that God purposely, before Jesus came, you all, it was darkness in this world. The Bible said that the light came and shined in darkness. We got over 400,000 children that's in darkness. What are we going to do? This is an ultimatum that the Lord sent me all the way from Possum Tribe to ask you all what about the children? I want to give you all a second to think about that. What about the children? Some of the smartest children, and we're so easy to talk about how bad they are, but we overlook that we got some little rascals that we brought in this world. <laughs> Come on now, you know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> we got some little rascals that we, we ain't calling them bad, but we see how bad they are. Yes, they tough. And I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that it's easy. But I learned a long time ago when I got on this, on this ride with Jesus, you got a cross that you got to bear. Because Jesus said, if you don't have no cross, you won't get no crown. And I don't care what the enemy does. I don't care what the politician does. I got a God to glorify. I, I got, a, I got a, a fulfillment. I, I got a promise that I got to fulfill. And I got a God that I got to glorify. And I want you all to know today that you are so important to the body of Christ. You are so important. I challenge you today, each and every one of you all, that we all can get involved. But those of you who are thinking about it, those of you feel that God is, is tugging on your heart, to do something about this. I want you to stand where you are. For those of you that said, I can do this. If they can do it in Possum Tribe on the other side of Coonville, 
surely I can do it here in California. We, we didn't have nothing, you all, absolutely nothing. We had to create games for the children to play. We had an old house that we had taken the window out of. That we used to play dodgeball. They'll stand in the window and we'd throw the ball and they'll jump out of the window. <laughs> because we didn't have nothing. We didn't have nothing. We used to make a, a basketball goal and we cut the bottom and the top out of a big can and nail it on a post and that's where we had to play basketball. We had nothing. But yet, there are 77 children today that said somebody thought about me and thought about me enough to raise me in their home. So I'm going to ask you one more time. If you're thinking about it, if you can't adopt, if you're just thinking about helping somebody that can adopt, I want you to stand on your feet. Because you stood, come on up, Pastor, with me. Because you stood today, I want to let you know that you're standing on the promises of God. Amen. Because you stood, God said, I, I, when you stood up, God said, I stood up with you. Not to say that it's going to be easy, but to say that you can complete the job. I want to have a word of prayer with every one of you all today. Will you just bow your heads? And if there's others want to stand, just stand. If you want to be, just say, I can be a friend to those who are going to make a step. Or I can join them in some kind of way. I want you to stand. Just stand. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just stand. This is important, y'all. This is a time that we, 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 we look at God from a different perspective. And we look at God as who he really is, our able God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we submit ourselves unto thy will. We come humbly and submissive, realizing, Lord God, that the strength that we have, it came from you. The knowledge that we have came from you. The ability that we have came from you. And Lord, we pray right now that you will release our fire in this place. That will cause your people, Lord, to rise above it all. A fire, Lord, that allow us to stand to the mountain. It said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to move. A fire, Lord God, that we say that we're going to empty the foster system out. That we got the power over everything that creeps upon this earth. Lord, in the name of Jesus, all those who have stood up, Master. I pray that you will impress upon their hearts. I pray, Lord God, until they make a move, that they can rest well at night, that they keep looking at the children who are locked in a system, looking at the children who have been troubled, who have been tortured and tormented. Lord, I pray right now that you will just have your way. I pray right now that you will touch every family that stood, every man, every woman that stood up in here, Lord, and said, I can make a difference. I can do something to help in the process. I can be an adopted parent. I can bring a child home with me. Oh, God, nobody can do this like you can. Nobody can help us like you can. We're standing on your word today. And we know, Lord God, we can do all things through you that strengthen us. We're standing on your word today, Lord, when you said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. For we are more than conquerors in you. We stand on your word today, Lord God, when you said that you'll go with us whatsoever we be, Lord. You will never forsake us, never leave us, Lord. And I pray now that you release an anointing upon your peoples. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I bless the homes. I bless their families. I bless their communities. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way in our life. Help us to make the right decision at the right time. Help us to walk in the way, Lord God. We pray that you will send forth workers who will work with us and do the right thing towards us. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. I got you all may be seated. I have in my hand, small town, big miracle. 
there is a movie. They're going to start shooting the movie in Macon, Georgia, October the 10th, from this book. And if you want to get ahead of the game, meet me outside, and you can read all about Bishop Martin and Possum Trot. This, you know, everything in this world, you got to pay taxes. I'm not going to charge you no taxes on this book. <laughs> you can have this book for $13.99. <laughs> and if you want to pay it back, I can give you that. <laughs> so I encourage you all to stop by because this book is going to be one of the premier books of all time. My wife told me, she said that, why don't you let Denzel Washington play you? and let me play myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> Solomon said, now hear the conclusion of the whole matter. <laughs> I said, well, why don't you let Holly Berry play you and I play myself? <laughs> then she wanted to put me out the room. Give it up for, Pat, uh, for the bitch. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Well-deserved. Well-deserved, church. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bishop, for coming. I had no idea you had to go through Coonville to get the possum trot. But that's, that's a fact. Thank you guys so much. And uh, you guys taught me something. You got a lot in you that you are holding back on me preaching. <laughs> I know your potential now, all right? So I want the same thing next week, all right? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. All right, you got it? All right. Um, uh, you, you know, Bishop doesn't just preach it, he practices it. Can you guys put up the slide? He showed me this picture of these are the four children plus his two biological children that he adopted himself. Those, that's his family, that's his wife. Those are, uh, those are six, a family of six. And so uh, we, we, we can do so much, church. This is what this series is all about. And I, I have one more guest I, I want to introduce you to. This is Shaylee Combs. Would you come up here, Shaylee? Now, I don't know. I don't know if that microphone's going to work. It was giving me feedback. Can you talk in it? Does that work? I can yell. Okay. No, no, no. Let me see. Let me see. Hello. Oh, there's another mic. All right. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So Shaylee, uh, you are here representing so much. Um, you guys should have all received one of these on your uh, chairs when you came in. Uh, but, but you are a champion. Not only did you help Katie with the camp, um, but we learned about you. And uh, I, I don't know uh, like if, if we disclose your age, but you've already fostered 28 kids. 23. 23. 23 kids, which is amazing. It's amazing. Especially as a single woman, uh, that's amazing. Uh, so you also work for James Storehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, you're part of them. So, so tell these guys, uh, God is moving. The Holy, the Holy Ghost is, is, uh, is, is giving us some promptings right now. So, so give us some good next steps for everybody and kind of tell them a little bit of your background. Yeah, so I love what the bishop said. Not everyone can foster, not everyone can adopt, but everyone can do something. And so that's what this pamphlet is about. So there's a couple things on here. Um, so yeah, I've fostered 23 kids and part of that is my grandparents have fostered and it's just been a part of our heart for my whole life. Um, but there's a couple things that you can do on here. So I do work for James Storehouse. It's an organization in Newberry Park that supports kids and families in the foster care system. So if you have stuff laying around your house, you have old um, bed frames you're not using anymore, clothing, formula, diapers. Um, we can use those and pass them on to at-risk families in Ventura and Los Angeles. So um, you can give those. It's really easy to just drop off and really help families that are in need. Um, 
there's a couple other things you can do. You can be a mentor for youth who are aging out of the system. And I think one thing that's really important is to realize when you're fostering and you're adopting, you're not just helping that one child, which is a big part of it, but you're a part of breaking generational cycles. And so those families, those kids, it's breaking cycles of abuse and poverty for years to come. So it's really important. So mentoring, um, one thing that Atmosphere is doing, which is really exciting, is we are sponsoring a foster home that will focus on parenting and adolescent youth in Ventura County. So yeah, amen. And, and this is something, we had dinner and you were just like giving us the vision and I go, what's stopping you? You said, well, I need a house. And yes. I said, uh, we live in a crazy area that people don't just have one house. Some of them have two or three. Yes. So, so maybe, maybe one of those people has a house yes. and they would give it up for the kingdom of God so that you can be a mom to all of these teenage girls that are pregnant or maybe have had a baby that you can take care of them. I mean, that, Shaylee, that's next level. That's next level. So, so if you say yes, we as a church want to say yes with you. Yes. Yeah, amen. And what that could look like, so many of us sponsor kiddos overseas through a monthly sponsorship, and it's amazing, but there's kids that could use that right in our very backyard. And so what it would take is 60 or 100 of you to donate $65 a month. So you may be sitting there thinking, it's not my family's time to foster and adopt, but we have $65 a month that we can give to Atmosphere to change the lives of teens and their kids and their kids and their kids. I think it's an amazing vision and that little QR code on the paper uh, this is just right now it's just a, a dream we, it, there's no house yet uh, there's just a, a, a ready and willing woman of God that is willing to say yes so we as a church want to get behind her that's the least we can do Shaylee we want to get behind you and I know as soon as this house is certified your phone is going to be ringing off the hook from these social workers that cannot place these girls yeah and um, she She's actually here, but we have a story of a social worker who had to call 89 different foster homes to get a placement for a youth, and every single one of them said no. And so the unfortunate reality is that certain demographics of kids in foster care are harder to place, even in families who have already decided to open their home. And so to have a place where we're willing to step in and a church community is willing to step around them is a huge deal. So thank you guys, and thank you guys for wanting to partner with me in that. And besides that, obviously, I loved how you said it, crawl, walk, run. And you know, there's different levels. And obviously, you're ready to run. Uh, there is a, uh, I guess the uh, Ventura County is represented outside for those maybe yes. that have never asked the question, like what would it take for us to open up our home to foster some of these kids? Maybe you can tell them about that process. Yeah, so Ventura County is out on the patio. So if you want to look a little bit into what it would look like, to be a resource or a foster home. You can talk to them if you have any questions. Um, I know there's quite a few families already with an atmosphere that are taking that step. So I will be at the James Starhouse table and the county will be out there as well. And we'd love to just talk with you. Um, again, what the bishop said, if there's anything in your heart, if the Holy Spirit is stirring up anything, just go ask questions and take that next step because that's there for a reason. Thank you so much, Shaylee. Thank Give you. it up for Shaylee. Thank you so much. Amazing. Amazing. If you're able to, would you stand with me? We're, we love to end our gatherings with worship, and it's a great opportunity to respond to what the Spirit of God has been speaking to you about as we've been talking about Matthew 25 and loving the least of these and what that looks like practically. And, and maybe in this whole series, it, it hasn't necessarily been the kids. Maybe it's the, the prison system. Maybe it's the sick. Maybe it, it's helping the, the, the houseless people around us. But this whole series is, is about waking us up to the reality that God has gone on the inside of us that he could use us as conduits of heaven to love us the same way he's loved us or to love others the same way he's loved us. There's a new movie that I saw on Tuesday and it's, it's done by a local um, lady here. It's called Wake Up. 
and uh, the Agora Hills Movie Theater is going to be playing it this week, and there's some flyers on the way out, but it, t it tells you on the other side what happens to kids that don't end up in, in people's homes. Um, they become a statistic, and, it, and it's hard to think about that the leading demographic of, of people that are being trafficked, human trafficking, are foster kids. We, we can end so much more than, than just helping a, a child in crisis. We, we can rescue them from becoming the next statistic. But maybe it would be good for you to just go watch this movie this week to get your arms around what's happening to a lot of these kids that are living in this darkness so that we can be a solution. We can be that light as Bishop talked about. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the ways that you've already prompted our heart in these last three weeks. God, we stand before you to say, here we are, send us, send us, oh God. You placed your Holy Spirit inside of us to be a powerful weapon, to bring light into darkness, to bring hope into hopelessness, to bring love into hatred and division. And Father, send us, oh God. Light a fire in us, God, that would spread out beyond the Conejo Valley, beyond Possum Trot, that God would be a movement across the nation, that we would see every foster care system in the United States emptied out by the power of the Church of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray and I believe, God, that there are going to be a hundred families within Atmosphere Church that are going to say yes to opening their home for these babies, for these children, for these teenagers in crisis. Got a hundred families to say yes, oh God. I pray, Father, that where you guide, you provide. So I pray, God, in this moment of worship, God, that you would get a hold of our hearts, confirm the things that you've been speaking. And if you are here today while you're praying and you just feel so far from God, so disconnected from God, we, we want to tell you that that loving God that has adopted so many of us in this room is here today to adopt you, my friend. Doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, or where you've been, the adoption papers are here right now for you to become royalty, to become a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to be his son, to be his daughter. And all that is keeping you from becoming royalty, from being adopted, is you saying yes to following Jesus, to surrendering your life to him and say, Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for dying for my sin and forgiving me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Some of you, that's the prayer that I encourage you to pray today. And if you do pray that prayer as we worship, take a moment, let us know, fill that connection card out, text the word follow to that Atmos phone number so that we can connect with you and, and help you in your next step for your faith in Jesus. But for the rest of us, let's worship church and let's respond to the things that God has worked inside of us this morning. Let's worship. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message has spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you? To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.